Hello Internet, Seth Skorkowski, and today we're going to do another player video, this time discussing combat. Combat is a big part of most tabletop role-playing games and becomes a serious problem point for a lot of new players. Many times a combat that shouldn't have been that much of a challenge ends up becoming this major hurdle, even a total party kill, when it really didn't need to be. And often the problem point really isn't the encounter's difficulty as much as it is the player's lack of strategy. So what we're going to do is cover 10 of the more basic strategies that you can use in a tabletop role-playing game. So if you have had issues with your character your group getting your butts kicked, then this video is for you. Now, veteran players, you probably know all this stuff already. At least I hope you know all this stuff already. Though, at least from my own group, even the most experienced players can forget some of this stuff from time to time. And often at the worst possible time. Now, all these strategies that I'm going to offer are pretty general, meaning that I don't care what system it is that you're playing, uh, whether that's D&D or Pathfinder or Call of Cthulhu or Cyberpunk or whatever. This is kind of a 101 class, meaning introductory. However, because I am approaching this with very general tips, depending on the specific game that you're playing, uh, your game's mechanics might not allow for all of these, and that's perfectly fine. Essentially, every tip that I'm going to offer today is going to work with most games, but not every tip is going to work with every game. So I leave it up to you as the player to see if the mechanics of your particular tabletop game is going to work with each piece of advice that I offer. Most of them probably will. So disclaimers out of the way, let's get started. And the first thing that you should know is to stick together. For example, let's say that your party of heroes enters this room. All of a sudden you're beset by opponents from all around. One player says, I'll take these on the left, you take those on the right, and you two take the middle. Now, while the PCs on either side might be capable fighters and even take some of their opponents out, the problem happens if one of them goes down. No one might be able to get to them in order to save them if their characters are even aware that that character went down. Then the bad guys begin swarming, taking out the lone PCs one at a time before over running the rest. The source of this problem usually comes down to the players wanting to have the glory of getting the most single-handed kills against their opponents, sort of the Gimli versus Legolas competition. But the problem is that most tabletop role-playing games are not designed that way. You are a party, a squad, a team, a lance, whatever it is that you want to call it, combat encounters are balanced against the group as a whole rather than the individuals that that group is made up of. D&D broke this down nice and clearly with the challenge rating mechanic mechanic, and PCs that then go charging off are now shooting the group's effectiveness in the foot because they left the group. So instead of splitting up and letting everybody else get picked off one at a time, you should stick together and watch each other's backs. Next, while sticking together is the first part of the equation, the next is to combine your attacks against single enemies. For example, our party is attacked by bad guys. They stick together. Good job. But then each of them goes after a different opponent. If their opponents are very weak and are going to be one hit, one kills, then that's fine, have at it, kill as many as you like. But most opponents are not going to be one hit, one kills. So for this example, let's say that each hit by a player character is equal to one half of a bad guy's total hit points. And each hit by a bad guy is equal to one quarter of a player character's total hit points. So round one, our four heroes attack four bad guys, giving each half hit points. But those enemies are still alive and now it's their turn. Each of those eight bad guys gets an attack, reducing all the PCs to half hit points. Round two rolls around and the player characters kill four bad guys. But then each of them take a hit for another quarter of their hit point total. Round three rolls around and they reduce the remaining bad guys to half. But then on the bad guys' turn, they wipe out the party and we have a total party kill. Now, many players are going to feel that that encounter was just a little bit too much for their characters to handle, and they're going to be understandably disappointed or even angry about that. However, if we use the same rules that I presented earlier, let's see what happens when the heroes combine forces. So round one, the heroes combine attacks, instantly eliminating two bad guys. Now on their turn, instead of eight attacks that do one quarter damage, damage, the bad guys only get six. Two heroes are reduced to half hit points, and two only lose a quarter. Round two, the heroes combine attacks, eliminating two more bad guys, bringing them down to four. The bad guys attack, bringing two of the heroes down to only 25% of their maximum hit points, and the other two down to half. Round three, the heroes eliminate two more opponents. Those opponents get their attacks, and now all of the heroes are only at one quarter hit points, and they're getting a little bit worried because one more hit and they're dead. 
Round four comes around and the heroes wipe out the rest of the bad guys. They're hurt, they're winded, but they're all alive. This is the difference between a total party kill and a thrilling close call that all your players are excited about and they're going to tell all their friends about, and it all came down to teamwork. Now, is this example perfect? No. Once you add the chaos factor of dice rolls and magic and everything else that can happen in a tabletop role-playing game, that can change a lot of factors in this. But mathematically, it's still to the player's advantage to eliminate as many opponents as quickly as possible, therefore reducing the number of attacks that the opponents get before they get to hurt the player characters than it is for each of the player characters to go after all of their opponents single-handedly trying to get as many individual kills as they can. Now, sometimes a combat is a little bit more than the player characters can handle. Either that's by design or just because the dice aren't rolling right that day. That is fine. Just remember, retreating is okay. So your heroes are in a combat and realize that it's more than they can handle. There is no shame in retreating, but you need to play it smart. Guys, these orcs are just too strong for us. I agree. We need to fall back. Well, Todd, you go first. I disengage and run. Mike, it's your turn. I hightail it on out of there. Okay, well now it's your opponent's turn. Two of the monsters give chase while the rest converge on Dweebles, overrunning him and he dies alone and abandoned. Story of my life. So instead of just declaring run away and having everyone scatter only to get picked off one by one, you should consider a tactical retreat. Guys, these orcs are just too strong for us. I agree, we need to fall back. Guys, I don't go until the end of the round. Don't abandon me. No way, brother. We leave no one behind. Well, Todd, you go first. I hold my action. Mike, it's your turn. Hold my action. Okay, well on their turn, they're gonna attack and uh... Each of you takes 15 points of damage. I'm really hurting here, guys. Dweebles, it's your turn now. I am disengaging and booking it. Then I'm going to take my held action, disengage, and go after them. I hightail it on out of there. This is an example of a tactical retreat. The players all waited so that they could then move at the same time. Now, another way that they could have done it, and probably should have done that, is that the two players, that instead of holding their action until the end of the round, they could have just gone, gotten their attacks, maybe eliminated a bad guy, which would have been great. But then at the end of the round, the player that was going last should have gone ahead and made their retreat then. Then when the next round starts and those two player characters get to go first, that's when they could retreat. That way they all still go at the same time. However you want to do it is perfectly fine. It doesn't really matter as much in the grand scheme of things, as long as you try to set it up that way all the player characters leave as close together as they can. Next tip, use your terrain. Rarely are you going to be fighting on a perfectly flat featureless plane. Use cover to protect yourself from ranged weapons, or get your back to the wall, or get your back to a car or beside a tree, that way you can't be flanked. Just standing out in the open is just begging to get shot. But the other big feature that terrain can give you is choke points. Let's go back to that scenario that we just did. So our heroes are outmatched, trying to fight five bad guys at once. Doing a tactical retreat, they fall back to a side passage. If the bad guys follow, it bottlenecks them down so that the player characters can now fight them only two at a time. Next, plan your player characters move before their turn. Okay, Todd, it's the end of round three. It is your turn. Any time now, I'm going to shoot him again. While the rest of the combat is going on, plan what your next move is going to be. Don't wait until it's your time to act before you even give any thought as to what that action is going to be. Now let's say you have a game with, let's say, six players in it. Each of those players spends an average of 10 seconds at the beginning of each of their turns deciding what it is that they want to do. That's not a very long time, but it does add up. So if your combat then lasts five rounds, that's now five full minutes that we spent staring at each other as players are trying to figure out what it is that they want to do. That sucks all the fun out of the game, it's boring, and it ruins the experience. Combat should be fun and exciting, and we should spend as little time as possible uh, watching each other just decide what it is what they want to do, instead of just going ahead and making that action as far as what they're going to do. So always be planning what your next attack move is going to be. Now sometimes, whatever it is you're planning, you're not going to be able to do due to some sort of factor that happened right before your turn started. Uh, that happens, that's completely normal, and it happens all the time. No big deal, totally understandable, and at that point, that's when you can decide what you want to do. But outside of a situation where the variable changed just before your round started, you should have already decided or be deciding what it is you want to do once your specific turn comes up. Which brings us to our next tip, make a battle plan. 
and also be willing to change it. Most groups are going to naturally start forming some sort of battle plan for themselves. Usually you have your most armored or damage dealing character out front, acting as your tank or your spearhead or whatever you call it, and the rest are going to be your ranged fighters that are going to be covering them from behind. Now figure out what a good default strategy for your group is based off your group's strengths and weaknesses. Everyone should know what their role in that default strategy is, and it can be incredibly effective once it's employed. However, no matter how effective that strategy has been in the past, never Never ever make it your only tactic. The old adage, if all you have is a hammer, then you're going to approach every problem as if it was a nail, sometimes variables change. Maybe a character becomes seriously injured, maybe a player missed a game, maybe this opponent just isn't right for the type of tactic that you've already made up. Whatever that variable is, religiously sticking to that strategy, even if it has worked before, can now work against you. For example, a few months ago we were playing Conan. My group had worked out a great combat strategy to build up momentum for each other and they were absolutely kicking ass with it. However, one session rolled around and we were down a player. He was off having a baby or something like that. And the rest of the frontline fighters were really, really hurting. Their once effective armor was now in pieces. Their health was dangerously low and they were no longer anywhere near as effective as they had been previously. And then we reached the final battle of a scenario. Once that combat began, they dove straight to their old standby tactic, despite the fact that they were down one of the key characters and their frontline fighters were now the weakest members of the entire party. Because they failed to adapt to their new situation, I was immediately worried that we were about to have a party wipe because their strategy put them at a serious disadvantage and even more of a serious disadvantage than they were already at. So the key isn't just to make a battle plan, but to change that battle plan depending on what your situation is. Otherwise, you might actually be hurting your chances of success. One easy strategy to employ is to strategize your attack order. Now this one doesn't work in all games, but it does work in a lot, Call of Cthulhu being one of those. The idea is that when multiple characters are attacking opponents, Possibly the second or third attacker might receive some sort of bonus or boon in order to hit. And this represents overwhelming or flanking or something like that against your opponent because there's so many people attacking it. Now if you have two characters that are fighting a single opponent, one of them is very powerful and likely to inflict massive amounts of damage, while the other is kind of weak and unlikely to do much damage even if they do hit, it doesn't do much good for that powerful character to go first at normal difficulty and then the weaker character to go next receiving pluses to hit but not really be able to do much if they even can land a hit. So players should strategize their attack order, holding action if they need to, so that way they can go in an order that gives the most advantage to the character that's likely to do the most damage against their opponents. Now in Dungeons and Dragons it doesn't really work this way, it's instead performed by the weaker characters for going their attack action to offer an assist or a help action in order for the more powerful characters to get a bonus die when they're trying to hit. It's a different means but essentially the similar results and that's how you should approach that if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons. Remember, it doesn't matter as much as to which character lands that killing blow as much as that one of your characters gets to kill that character as quickly as possible, and that everyone in the team is doing their best in order to ensure that. Next, instead of just swapping hits with your opponent back and forth until one of you drops, sometimes the best attack is to simply remove their ability to attack you. This is where we get all the fun combat actions. You disarm, sweeps, holds, shoves, essentially removing your opponent's ability to hit you, and often times giving the rest of the party a better chance at hitting your opponent. A lot of players tend to neglect these maneuvers, but they can be a huge game changer. For example, several years ago we were playing Cyberpunk 2020 and we'd been playing for a while, but none of my players ever used these combat maneuvers. Then one day one of the players took over the reins as Game Master, allowing me the rare opportunity to play. Now the setup is that we were on a boat, weaponless, and we were boarded by pirates armed with assault rifles. Our characters were all hiding in a cabin, ready to pounce on the first pirate that stepped inside. Now everyone knew that we had to take out one of these pirates quickly in order to get that assault rifle away from them, that way they couldn't pull the trigger, because in Cyberpunk 2020 a single bullet from an assault rifle is probably going to ruin your day, and since it's an automatic weapon it could probably take out the party in just a single round. Once the pirate stepped in, I went first and just disarmed him. The rest of the players sort of looked at me, shocked that it was that easy for me to do. They had never tried anything like that before and were just going to go by their old standby plan of just punching their opponent a lot and hoping that that would take them out in time. So never underestimate the power of these alternate attacks that can be far more effective than anything, especially when you're outgunned and if your opponent hits you a single time it might take out your character, just remove your opponent's ability to hit you that first time. Don't be afraid to take the penalty. Most RPGs give us all sorts of pluses to hit and damage 
damage, especially with favored weapons of the light. Players love getting as many pluses as they can because bonuses are fun. However, our love of bonuses sometimes leads players to blindly following the tactic that gives them the most pluses in order to do something, even though there might be a far more effective tactic out there that doesn't offer as many bonuses or might even incur a minus in order to do it. A simple example of this is let's say your characters are fighting an enemy that only takes little to no damage from edged weapons. Your character has a great sword and is highly skilled with it. They get a plus eight. Meanwhile, your character also has a club that gives less bonuses or even no bonuses to hit, but it's going to be far more effective against this opponent because it's not an edged weapon. In fact, this club's minimum damage that it could possibly do is equal or more than any damage that your sword could possibly do. Now, the logical thing here is to use that blunt weapon. However, many players cannot get past having the idea of not getting all those pluses that they want, even when those pluses are essentially meaningless in the situation because they're not actually going to buy them anything. Some games give us penalties for certain things, like using two weapons or trying to move a certain distance within a combat round, and players are then going to choose not to do these things, no matter how advantageous they might be, because all they see are the minuses and not the benefits that those minuses are going to be buying. Them. I broke this down very clearly in my review for Cyberpunk 2020 where I showed how some characters might have over a 100% chance of success at something and they can take several minuses and still have a great chance of success, but they don't act on that because they only see minuses as being a taboo and they're not really seeing this as sort of a uh, give and take sort of situation. So any players out there, depending on what system it is that you're playing, always consider what your options are. Sure, taking a minus might not be as sweet as all those great bonuses that you could get if you do something else, but always weigh the benefit of what those pluses and their minuses are, and many times it's worth it to take the minus. Next, know your group's assets. I already mentioned that you should be looking at your party as a unit, and you should have some sort of basic battle plan in place. But try to be familiar with what all the other player characters have and can do. I can't tell you how many times I've watched characters face some sort of encounter that would have been shockingly easier had someone in the party just bothered to remember that one of them had that one item or that one ability that could have taken care of this without any effort at all. Now, as a player, it's your duty to know what's all on your character sheet and how your spells and all your abilities work. That's a given. That's just part of being in a role-playing game. However, sometimes we forget. Maybe you're new to the game and you really haven't mastered everything on your character sheet yet, or maybe you're so caught up in the moment that you totally forgot that you have that one item or that one ability that can totally save the day here. That happens, you're only human. Presumably you're human. So your effectiveness as a team only works better if everybody else in the group at least has a basic understanding of what it is your character has and what it is your character can do. Now, don't rely on anyone else to remember this stuff for you. Do not allow this to become some sort of crutch where you're uh, expecting them to remember everything for you. But at the same time, we all need a general reminder from time to time. So remind the group what it is you have and what it is you can do. Talk about it, maybe update your battle plan around this information, and just keep it in mind for that one day that finally rolls around that that one one-shot item that you've been carrying around for the next last nine sessions might suddenly have its day to shine. Okay, I said there were 10 tips, but here's kind of a special bonus 11th, because it's a really just a combination of some of the others that I've already mentioned, and it's really the hardest one to explain because it doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people until they found themselves in the situation, but I am going to mention it because it is extremely helpful once you're able to recognize it. Sometimes your job is to take the hit. Players who take the frontline fighter role understand this. They're the punching bag that takes all the attacks, that way the other characters don't have to. But all the characters need to be the target from time to time. Remember those examples that I gave about what happens when a player is stuck alone and all their opponent's hits are then focused on them? Even if each of those tips does just a minimal amount of damage, it can add up very quickly. Sometimes the best way that you can help out another character is just to stand beside them and help distribute the enemy's attacks across a wider range instead of allowing all those attacks to be focused against a single PC. This is a problem that happens most often with groups that either lack a heavily armored fighter or their tank character is just getting overrun. So even though the archer might not be the best up close fighter, it's sometimes better that they take the front and let the injured character fall back or step up beside the injured character to help distribute those attacks between them because at the moment, what the group needs more than range is a meat shield to help take the hits. Your opponent is going to be attacking someone in your group once their turn rolls around, so you as a group should try to take control of who it is 
weapons that your opponent attacks. That way, everyone in your group can make it out alive. Now, it's not that I'm going to be picking on you ranged attack players. I understand. I usually play a ranged character whenever I do get a chance to play. But ranged characters are usually the worst at recognizing when it's time to put down the bow or the rifle and just close in and be able to take the hits. There's no definite time that you can really point at and say, this is when you should step up and take one for the team. But if you just follow the principle of all everybody in the group sticking together and changing your battle plan and being able to recognize when is the time to do the thing that might not give you the most bonus but is certainly the most advantageous thing for you to do, that's when you're going to be able to recognize that sometimes your character's best position is just stepping up and taking the hit, that way the rest of the party doesn't have to. Anyway, that is it. Some pretty short and simple basics, and I hope you've all at least found at least one thing that you hadn't thought about before or something that you might have forgotten. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our videos, such as game reviews and how-tos, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, amigos, y'all have a great day.